Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, I'm going to show you something really interesting. My PS4 is capable of firmware reversion. That means I can downgrade the system software anytime I want, which is something you don't see every day. I'll also give you a closer look inside the console and show you the wiring setup that makes all of this possible. On top of that, I'll be doing a live demonstration where I update the firmware to the latest version available at the time of this recording, and then revert it back to a much lower version. So if you're curious about how firmware reversion works in practice, make sure to stick around. As you saw earlier, in the back right corner of this PS4, there's a connector for a jumper cable. This connector will be used to hook up a Teensy microcontroller, which we'll use to restore patched backup files of the Syscon and NOR chip. And here is the Teensy. I've already soldered the cables and this end will later be plugged into the back of the PS4. If you want to know how to build a Teensy for firmware reversion, you can check out this video of mine. Besides restoring, the TNC can also be used to back up data from the Syscon and Enor chip for firmware reversion purposes. All right, back to the PS4. This particular jumper cable is used to turn the Luxfox Pico on and off. So yes, inside this PS4, I've also installed a Luxfox Pico module, which is used to activate the jailbreak. Now let's remove the bottom cover so I can show you the wiring. This is the Lockfox Pico, which is used to automatically activate the jailbreak since my PS4 is on firmware 11.00. If you want to know how to install the Lockfox Pico onto a PS4 motherboard like this, you can check out this video of mine. Let's remove this metal plate so you can clearly see the wiring that will be connected to the Teensy. This one is the connection to the Syscon chip. This one goes to the NOR chip. And these two are UART pinouts connected to a USB to TTL adapter. For a detailed explanation of all these connection points, you can also check out this other video of mine. Okay, now let's move on to the firmware reversion demo. Let's put the PS4 cover back on first. Now let's go back to the PS4. First, I'll show you the current firmware version. As you can see here, it's running version 11.00. All right, now let's update it to the latest firmware version. First, we'll connect the PS4 to the internet. Then we proceed with the update. As you can see, the latest firmware version available at the time of this recording is 12.50. Okay, let's go ahead and update it. The update process is now complete. Let's double check the firmware version. As you can see, the PS4 is now updated to the latest version. Now let's try logging into PSN. All right, login to PSN was successful and we can access the PS Plus menu. Now it's time to perform the firmware reversion. Now let's move over to the computer. I've already prepared all the necessary files and applications. For the revert files that we'll be restoring to the Syscon and NOR chip, we'll be using files that will revert the firmware back to version 10.50. In addition to the firmware 11.00 files, I also have the patch Syscon and NOR chip files for firmware 10.50. As you can see here, I've also prepared several applications that we'll be using to restore these revert files. All the application download links are included in the description if you need them. Now, let's connect the Teensy jumper cable to the PS4. Then we connect the Teensy to the computer via USB cable.
Now we're going to begin restoring the revert files to the PS4. First, we'll restore the NOR chip. To do that, we need to program the TNC to be able to access the NOR chip on the PS4. To program the TNC, we run the TNC loader application found in the PS4 Siskin Tools folder. Under HW, Loaders. Then we open the program file located in the Norway Master Spyway release folder. Drag the spyway.hex file into the TNC loader window. After that, click Auto, and then press the physical program button on the TNC to begin programming. All right, that's done. Now the TNC is ready to restore the revert file to the NOR chip. Let's go back to the root folder of Norway Master. In this location, we'll open a command prompt. To do that, click on the folder path bar at the top and type CMD. Before restoring the revert file, we first need to check whether the TNC is properly connected to the NOR chip using the following command. Make sure to adjust the COM port number according to your computer, as it may be different. To find out your COM port, open Device Manager and click on Ports, COM and LPT. On my computer, it shows as COM6. After that, type A space and then Info, then press Enter. If you see the chip information displayed like this, it means the TNC is successfully connected to the NOR chip. Now we'll erase the NOR chip before restoring. To do that, type the following command. Use the up arrow key to bring up the previous command so you don't have to type it again. Replace info with erase chip, then press enter. Let's wait for the chip erase process to finish. Okay, done. Next, we'll restore the revert file. First, I'll clear the screen using the CLS command. Then type the following command. Press the up arrow key twice to bring up the previous command. Replace erase chip with VWrite, followed by the path to the NOR chip revert file. To copy the file path, go to the NOR revert file. Hold Shift, right-click on it, and select Copy as Path. Then right-click in the Command Prompt window to paste it. Press Enter to start the restore process. This process will take quite a while, around 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm going to skip ahead here. Okay, the NOR chip restore is complete. Now let's move on to restoring the Syscon chip revert file. Just like before, we first need to program the TNC so it can communicate with the Syscon chip. To do that, we open the TNC loader application again. For the program file, we'll use the one inside the HW folder under TNC++ 2.0. Drag the PS4 Syscon flasher file into the TNC loader window, then click Auto and press the program button on the TNC to begin the flashing process. All right, that's done. To restore the Syscon revert file, we'll use the PS4 Syscon Tools application located in the PC folder. Since .NET Desktop Runtime wasn't installed on my computer, I was prompted to install it first. Now that it's installed, let's relaunch the PS4 Syscon Tools app. First, click on the Options menu and check the Enable Advanced option box if it's not already enabled. Then click Yes. Under Syscon Process, select Write Syscon NVS slash SNVS only. Then, in the Input Output File section, choose the Syscon Revert file. Finally, click Start to begin the restore process. Unlike the NOR chip, this one finishes very quickly. All right, both the NOR and Syscon chip restores are complete. Now, we can disconnect the TNZ jumper cable from the PS4. Next, power on the PS4. If everything went well, you should see a message prompting you to reinstall the firmware version that matches the revert file we restored earlier. 
As you can see here, the PS4 is showing the reinstall firmware message for version 10.50. That means we've successfully reverted the firmware from 12.50 back to 10.50. Next, we just need to reinstall the firmware. First, download it from a website that archives older firmware versions. Make sure to download the recovery version, not the retail one. And be sure to download the same version that appeared earlier, in this case, version 10.50. While waiting for the download to finish, prepare a USB flash drive that has been formatted to XFAT or FAT32. In the root directory of the flash drive, create a new folder named PS4. Inside that folder, create another folder named UPDATE, all in capital letters. This is where we will place the recovery firmware file. Once the firmware download is complete, Go ahead and copy it to the folder we just created. Then plug the USB flash drive into the PS4. On the screen, select OK to begin the firmware reinstallation process. Let the process run until the PS4 restarts by itself. All right, it's done. Now let's check the firmware version of my PS4 again. As you can see, the firmware has been successfully reverted to 10.50. Oh right, there's one more thing we need to do. If you noticed, even though I previously had games installed on this PS4, they no longer appear. However, the actual game files are still stored on the hard drive, which you can see from the storage usage. Since the games are no longer usable, it's best to delete them so they don't take up space unnecessarily. To delete them, we need to reset the PS4 from the initialization menu found at the very bottom of the settings. Choose Initialize PS4, then select Quick so the process doesn't take too long. Next, choose Initialize and then Yes to confirm. Wait for the process to complete and for the PS4 to restart. Now let's go through the initial setup process again. Finally, check the storage status once more. You'll see that the free space on the hard drive has returned to what it should be. And that wraps up this tutorial on how to successfully revert your PS4 firmware using a Teensy microcontroller. As you've seen, we were able to downgrade from firmware version 12.50 back to 10.50 by restoring the patched syscon and NOR chip backups. This process allows you to regain jailbreak compatibility on your PS4, especially if you accidentally updated to a higher firmware version. I hope this video helped guide you through each step clearly, from wiring and programming the Teensy, all the way to restoring the firmware and cleaning up your hard drive. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more PS4 jailbreak content and updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.